Would you consider yourself an overweight child? No. Hey everybody, it's Tony with Big T Bariatric and I'm back at you with another video. Today it is New Year's Day. Happy New Year to every single one of you. I hope you all have an amazing, blessed, safe, and happy New Year to come. In this next year, I'm looking forward to a lot of big things on this channel. Hopefully I hit that 10,000 subscriber mark. We are on our way there. So if you look down and you're not subscribed to this channel, please hit that button for me. Help me reach my goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers. Hopefully within the next couple months here, I'll hit that mark. But today we're gonna cover fat activists who are caught lying. Yes, fat activists lie all the freaking time. Why do they lie? Because they want to portray themselves as victims who cannot help or change the situation that they're in. They realize being overweight is a burden on them, but instead of relieving that burden by losing weight, they push it on everybody else. It's everybody else's fault that they're fat. It's everybody else's fault that they don't fit on a seat. It's everybody else's fault that they can't find a job or that they're in pain or whatever else. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna cover some of the biggest fat talkers and the biggest liars who are out there today. So let's get started right away. You wanna know what's fat phobic? The photo booths. And here's why. Only one fat bitch fits in here. We tried to both get in and I got stuck. I don't think you're gonna pick off. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I really hope they're kidding here, but I got the feeling that they're not. They're really offended that they can't fit in a photo booth, even though they're, it looks like they're joking around about it and, and they're making fun of it and stuff like that. But I've seen four or five people fit in a photo booth before. I've seen pictures from friends growing up who got in photo booths with, with all their friends and took that picture. And it's really a relic of the past because we all have cell phones now. But being a relic of the past, it's really meant for mostly couples to get in there and take a picture while they're at the mall and enjoying themselves. So if you yourself are so big that you cannot fit in a freaking photo booth when it's meant for multiple people, that should be a sign that there's a problem. And it's a problem that you can fix. We are going backwards as a species. How do we go from this in the 90s to this today? How do we go from this to this, 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 this? Okay, I'm gonna put beauty standards, fashion trends, the food industry, and Australia aside. Right around the same time as that photo shoot, Mark Wahlberg was committing hate crimes. And I'm not talking about misgendering someone, I'm talking about beating minorities senseless almost to death. He probably did a hate crime later that day. And Kate Moss, who has talked about how uncomfortable Mark Wahlberg made her in the photo shoot, was 17 at the time. She's 17 and topless. She is literally a minor. I don't know. I think things have gotten better. So given the choice between hate crimes and sexualizing minors and not that, I'm going to choose not that, otherwise known as this. I'm not gonna defend Mark Wahlberg or Kate Moss or whoever made those pictures. I don't know if any of those things he said in that video is true. Maybe he was committing hate crimes. Maybe she was 17. I don't know. I haven't looked it up. But the issue here is that instead of facing the reality that now we have fat people making the cover of magazines and ads and modeling, really pushing the fat agenda is a step backward. Again, I'm not all for the beauty standards of today or of yesterday. Like. I am all against that. I've covered it many times in my videos. I do not think we need to hold that standard of where 17 year olds are posing topless or you need to be chiseled to, to be whatever. Like that's not something that I uphold on this channel. I don't think it's right. We don't need to force people into modern day beauty standards. But to go to the complete opposite end of the spectrum and have fat people modeling and saying that we need more fat role models out there, that's the absolute wrong message to send. So we are going back Words. The more that this fat activism thing grows, the more fat people who are being 
prominently featured on movies and TV because we need more fat role models out there, the more disgusting it's going to become because there are people growing up now who think that that's okay, that they don't have to change, they don't have to lose weight because the fat activists are fine. You can still fit into a plane, you could still be a model and be fat at the same time without putting any regard whatsoever into your health. And it's the absolute wrong message we need to be sending to young people. I lost 60 pounds in six months. Everyone was so happy for me. I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated why I did, why I exercised and things like that. And so I made the conscious decision of my parents are not going to be supportive or maybe they won't like it. My community, the Korean community, mm. is going to be really disappointed that there's a fat Korean walking around the world. Mm. But it was a choice for me to say, well, I don't want to work out eight hours a day every day and hate what I look like to be skinnier. So I'm going to let myself eat more than a quarter cup of white rice today. This is an interesting one because she actually told the truth. She said that you can go out there and lose weight if you want to. She actually did the work. She cut down her calories. She, you know, reduced the amount of rice she was eating or, or whatever, and she lost the weight. But then she goes into talking about how she absolutely hated herself. Why did she hate herself? Because her family would accept her now that she wasn't an overweight Korean? Because society looked better on her now because she had lost the weight and she was a more normal size? Like, that's the part that I don't get here. She hated the way she looked and the way she felt losing weight because it went against societal norms. Like, she felt that it was fat phobic for her to do that, to hate her fat body. And so she decided to go and gain the weight back. I don't understand this mentality whatsoever. She might not have liked the way she looked, but she was a lot healthier. She was able to do more. And now she's going to keep eating and eating and eating because that's the way she wants to live. And then that ultimately is going to lead her to living a miserable life. She might not be miserable right now. Okay, I can't say that. I don't know this person. But the fact that she thinks that she's happier being overweight, that's going to lead to a lot of problems later on in her life. So right now she's acting like a contrarian. She just needs to rebel against society, rebel against her parents, be fat because she's happier eating a bunch of food. But in the long run, it's going to make her miserable. Thinking she's happier because she's fat is actually the lie. Recently came across a video of a lady trying to buy plus size clothes at a normal store. Do you have plus sizes at this location or no? Okay, thank you. Northridge? Okay, thank you. Um, do you have plus sizes at this location? Uh, the, the biggest size we carry in the store is double XL. Okay, thank yeah. you. Pardon? Do you have your plus sizes at the store at this location? Yes, or no? we to the Okay, thank you. One, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that she says that double XL is not plus size. It absolutely is plus size when you consider that the normal average size for people should not be in the X's, the double X's, the triple X's, etc. So if you're above 2X and you're frustrated that you can't buy clothes bigger than that, that's a you problem. That's a problem that you created that you need to fix by going out there and finding the places that will cover your size. To expect every store out there to cover your size and then to go on and attack them because they don't, that's not fat phobic. They just don't want to carry sizes that big. Maybe because it's a smaller market. There's smaller people who are above double XL than there are people who are below double XL. So that's why they do it for marketing purposes. It's not because they're fat phobic. But then again, she was frustrated that she'd have to drive an hour away to go to a store that actually had her size. She doesn't actually have to do that. There are places that do cover larger sizes near her home. She probably cherry picked the stores that she knew would not have her stuff, that the high end places that she knew would absolutely not have her size. So she can make a video and, and get famous off of, oh, well, I'm being discriminated against when in reality you're not. You created the problem and then you're going to go out there and blame everybody else for not catering to you and that's absolutely ridiculous. 
We should also mention that you can shop online, which is what a lot of people are doing these days. There are many websites that cover obese people. Yes, there are. You can go all over the place. You can look on Amazon. They have plus sizes on Amazon. You can go to Beauty Plus. There are all kinds of websites that have clothes carrying larger sizes. If I didn't, then I wouldn't be able to get dressed because at my heaviest, I was at a 9X. Yes, I was wearing 9X clothes. Where can I find 9X? Well, I found it on King Size Direct. That's where I found most of my clothes, but there's more and more websites I'm seeing because I'm their target audience. I'm still overweight being in the mid 400s. You know, there, there are websites that still target me because there's more and more places that are trying to cater to the obese and the very, very overweight people. So yes, there are options for you to shop. If there weren't, then you wouldn't be dressed today, would you? No, so she was able to find a store they carried her size, but she was just mad that she couldn't shop at the stores that she wanted to, which I think is ridiculous. Maybe if you lost a little bit of weight, then you could start buying the, those double X's. Lose 100 pounds over the next year, and then maybe by next year you'll be able to shop at the stores you want to, rather than being angry and targeting them because they don't have the sizes you want. I don't know, fashion makes like no money unless you're a thin white woman. So... <laughs> So she's a thin white woman, so. Being plus size in the social media industry has definitely been hard. There's visibly fat plus size people, and then there's people with the quintessential perfect curves. Like almost, unfortunately, how plus size are you? Okay, so I um, am a plus size supermodel, so everything I do is pretty much lifestyle around that. Have a, a lot of I would put you first. Absolutely. Like, just, yeah, you have Absolutely. so many strings of income. So many strings I don't, of income. Yeah. I, Well, 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 I'm a victim. I make over $100,000 a year as a plus size model. Oh no, you know, you, you can't make any real money in this industry un unless you're a small white woman when she's making over $100,000 a year. Like I have no sympathy for her whatsoever. She makes probably three times what I make. And then when you actually compare the two salaries, she doesn't make a whole lot less than what the small, smaller white women are making. Like it's just absolutely ridiculous. But again, there's something you can do about it. You don't have to force your way into the industry as a plus size model. If you wanted to lose a little bit of weight, maybe you'd start making a little bit more money. Again, you're just painting yourself as this big victim when you're not really a victim. How you're able to make that much money over 100 grand a year still being plus sized is just absolutely ridiculous to me. But hey, you're able to do it. You're actually succeeding in an industry that wasn't made for you. So why are you paying yourself as a victim? You're actually out there doing it. Anyways, that's my video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have anything to say, if you agree with me or disagree with me, leave me a comment down below. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Please share it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. God bless you.